Hello, here's a quick video about uh, what some information radiologists need to report DEXA scans using the PowerScribe 360 um, reporting templates. So I wanted to review some of the parameters and guidelines that are out there now as of uh, 2016. The first and most important one is the American College of Radiology practice parameters for DEXA scan reporting and it was updated in 2014. So this mentions what some of the reports should include. So I will just go through some of those uh, things. So you have to include the unit manufacturer and model number. That's, you need that for an online uh, cal calculator to calculate uh, fracture risk. Some uh, pertinent history. And some of the societies recommend actually giving risk factors. So our template, since we want to meet all the recommendations, actually mentions um, risk factors. Anatomic information like where you scanned and why. And then um, we basically have three templates. One is a baseline 50 years and older. One is 50 years and older with comparisons. And then one is less than 50 years old. So these reports should include, um, for 50 and older, should include the bone mineral density, the T-score at each site, and a classification, one classification according to WHO criteria. Just give one diagnostic category of normal osteopenia or osteoporosis. Don't try to break it out uh, by area. Just one if patient gets it based gets a whole diagnosis based on the worst area. The areas you're supposed to look at uh, the lowest T score of the lumbar spine. You have to use at least two levels, preferably four. Never reported based on one lumbar vertebral level. You can always have fatty hemangiomas, which are way too lucent to be uh, giving people a diagnosis of osteoporosis based on one lumbar level. So lumbar spine, total hip, or femoral neck, whichever is worst, and the distal third of the radius. Never use the whole forearm. It has to be the distal third of the radius. Then assign the WHO classification only to the lowest T-score, not to each site evaluated. And then don't try to further define the WHO categories. Not further defined as mild, moderate, or severe. It's either osteopenia or osteoporosis, but never say severe osteoporosis or severe osteopenia. It's just, it's got it or not. All right, next, the report should contain a statement about risk fracture. And really what that means is their FRAX, which stands for Fracture Risk Assessment Tool. And it's a way to predict the 10-year fracture of a major fracture or hip fracture based on that patient's bone mineral density and other risk factors. And the machines will automatically report this out. The text will um, put in clinical values and the bone uh, mineral density of the femoral neck and the manufacturer, and the machine will put it out or they can go online and use a calculator and do it. But we, our report should mention something about it. Either give it if it's appropriate, or uh, there's a statement that refers to an online calculator. Remember, you only are allowed to uh, use FRAX. It's only valid in people who are over 40 years old. So you can add it to the Z-score template if they're between 40 and 50. Those are for, the Z-scores are for people under 50. But that 40 to 50, you could use FRAX, not for people that are younger than 40. Or, and you only give it to people who have a, an abnormal bone density, so osteopenia or osteoporosis that hasn't yet been treated. Once you start treating the osteoporosis, then they don't uh, want you to start uh, continue to give the risk, fra risk factors. All right, so now I'll mention a, a statement about the report for people younger than 50. Technically, it's premenopausal women or men younger than 50, but we just use everybody under 50 or children. And, what, and for, their, for those reports, you... T-scores are not valid. You only use Z-scores. Never report T-scores. Do not report. T-scores should not be reported for children or anybody under 50. So do not report the T-scores. Instead, report Z-scores. And then the, the normal ranges are different. And so the template has that range on it. But um, individuals with Z-scores of less than 2 are considered abnormal and have low bone density. All right, so enough of that. All reports should mention artifacts or other technical issues. And uh, regarding comparison, you have to give comparisons, give the values for them, and say whether the change is statistically significant. And more on that later. The ACR just says, say whether it's statistically significant, but um, we'll later discuss how to determine if it's significantly, statistically significant. Okay, so reports for abnormal patients should recommend treatment of patients diagnosed with osteopenia or osteoporosis. So these recommendations can be made. So we just made a general statement, you know, consider treatment put that in the pull-down list for the um, impressions. And then a statement should be made regarding causes, excluding secondary causes of low bone density. Um, you know, we're assuming, or people often assume, that people with low bone density either have 
postmenopausal or senile osteoporosis, but they could have myeloma, bone metastases, renal failure, some other reason not really postmenopausal or senile osteoporosis, so you need to consider that. So um, we, didn't put, we didn't put the actual causes on there, but just for information from the International Osteoporosis Foundation, there are a list of causes of secondary osteoporosis, including uh, medical conditions like renal failure, liver failure, Cushing's disease, rheumatoid arthritis, malabsorption, parathyroid disorders, thyroid disorders, diabetes, hypercortisolism, bone problems like thalassemia, multiple myeloma, leukemia, METs, and certain medications like, or, or chemicals like cigarette smoking, steroid use, alcohol use, lithium. All right, now there's a, this, this is from a calculator, online calculator from the University of Sheffield in England, and they uh, are the ones that put out this FRAX calculator tool. And for this, basically from all they need from us is the bone mineral density, the femoral neck, and the manufacturer of the machine. But it also is a nice, these are the risk factors that they consider. So if you're gonna list, li risk, list risk factors on the report, these are risk factors that are important. Age, so basically Medicare will cover any DEXA scan for a woman age 65 years or a man age 70 or older. Uh, if they're younger than that, they have to have a couple risk, or at least they have to have one risk factor. So you should throw that on there as a risk factor, particularly, particularly women under 65, men under 70. So uh, being uh, real thin is a risk factor, a previous fracture, personal fracture of that patient is a risk factor, a family history of fracture, current smoking, steroid use, it had to be at least three months duration, rheumatoid arthritis, other you know risk factors for secondary osteoporosis like diabetes, osteogenesis imperfecta, hyperthyroidism, hypogonadism, malnutrition, liver disease, malabsorption, alcohol, three or more units per day. So three drinks a day as a risk factor. And okay, that's all for the FRAX calculator. Now a statement regarding follow-up because it's recommended that they uh, get a statement about follow-up. So I copied this off of the GE Lunar Scanner printout and it says patients with osteoporosis or at high risk for fracture should have regular DEXA scans. Medicare allows testing every uh, two years. The scan frequency can be increased to one year for a variety of causes. So we just made a, a real brief statement we put on the pull down for osteopenia and osteoporosis says, you know, uh, should have regular DEXA scans every one to two years, something like that. All right, here's some notes from the International Society of Clinical Densitometry. And it basically talks about how to do these least significant change calculations, which you need for determining whether a change from a comparison is valid or statistically significant. And note that it can only be determined if it's done on the exact same unit. So they talk about how they calculate this least significant change, basically the text, you know, when they first start, they take 15 patients, scan them three times, or 30 patients, scan them two times, and then they subtract their differences and then um, multiply that difference time a 95% conversion factor of, I think it's 2.8. And this is basically acceptable ranges of error, about 5% for a spine, 5% for a hip, 7% for a femoral neck. And, but you have to see what it actually is, and that's listed on the table for that particular patient to see if the change is significant. And uh, let's see, anything else? Okay, yeah, so um, items that should not be included on your DEXA report. Never mention mild, moderate, or marked osteopenia. It's just osteopenia or osteoporosis, never say mild, marked. Never give separate diagnoses for different regions. Like don't say there's osteopenia of the hip and osteoporosis of the spine. And don't include results from skeletal sites that are not technically valid. In other words, if you think the lumbar spine is all sclerotic, don't, don't put the results on there. Just say that lumbar spine is invalid because it's sclerotic. And don't report a change in bone mineral density if it is not a significant change based on the precision of error. Um, and regarding comparison between different facilities, it's not possible to quantitatively compare bone mineral densities or calculate a least significant change between facilities without cross calibration. And we don't do cross calibration between facilities. So basically it's not possible to quantitatively compare unless it's done on the same unit. You could theoretically subjectively compare, but most people don't. They just say we can't compare because it wasn't done on the same unit. And that is all for uh, this portion of the tape. Later I'll show you how to um, use the template. Thank you very much. Now we'll figure out how to stop this.